All right, in this video, we're doing uh, a little bit of a review on exponents. So we'll look at um, uh, simplifying expression with exponents or looking at exponent laws. We'll also look at how exponents play a role in scientific notation and then how they also play a role in uh, orders of operation. To begin with, uh, we'll look at uh, six uh, exponent laws. Some of them interrelated, but this is what they are. So the product law says... If you're multiplying two things together, two expressions together, and if you have the same base, so both these bases are the same, if you're multiplying, you can simplify or squish those together by writing one base and then adding the exponents. So for example, if I have 2 to the 3rd times 3 to the 5th, you can't do anything with that because the bases aren't the same. Okay, not a good example. How about 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 5th? Since the 2's are the same, I can add the exponents. So this would be 2 to the 3 plus 5, or we'd probably just write 2 to the 8th. You could simplify that more and figure out what 2 to the 8th is as well, but uh, I'm just showing you the law here. Similarly, the quotient law says if I'm dividing common bases, subtract their exponents. So say I have 2 to the 5th divided by 2 to the 3rd. That's the same as 2. I subtract the exponents. 5 take away 3, or simply 2 squared. This is one that's easier to figure out. 2 squared, 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so there's two laws. Here's another two, the power law. So if I have uh, an expression that has an exponent in it, and then I raise that to an additional exponent, then the rule is I can multiply those two exponents together. So if I have uh, x to the third all squared, that's the same as x to the three times two, or x to the sixth. Um, if I have power of a product, so I have a product in the brackets here, and then I'm raising that to a power. And what that means is I need to raise each thing inside to an exponent. So say, for instance, I have 2x to the third. So I have two factors inside there, and so each one of them needs to get raised to the third power. So it would be 2 to the third and x to the third. 2 to the third, I think, comes out to 8, so that would be simplified to 8x cubed. Another couple of rules. One is a zero exponents. If I ever have anything that's raised to the zero power, it's equal to one. So here I have some nonsense. Uh, doesn't matter what it is, if it's raised to the zero, it's equal to one. If I have x to the zero, anything to the zero power is equal to one. Star to the zero equals one. If I have negative exponents, uh, typically that's taboo. You want to, uh, sim when you simplify an expression, uh, you must not have negative exponents in it. And so the way you can get uh, rid of the negative exponents is to change them to the opposite side of the fraction line, and then you can make it positive. So here I have, and I'll, let me put a number out front there. This is 1 times x to the minus 2. So I can take this, and I can move it to the bottom of the fraction, and the exponent there instead of minus becomes positive. Let's try one. So say I have 2 to the minus 3. That would be the same as 1 over 2 to the positive 3. Notice that 1 there comes from I could multiply anything. That's a, a rule that we looked in the other one, the multiplicative identity rule, that if I multiply anything by 1, it doesn't change it. And so that 1 doesn't just sort of appear. It's always there. Okay, and then with this one, 2 cubed, I could uh, multiply that out. It's not 6, it's 2 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 8. Okay, uh, here are some questions that you can try. Go ahead and pause the video and try these questions, and then press play and we can look at them. This first one is the uh, um, product rule. So when you're multiplying uh, common bases, you add their exponents, it would be 2 plus a negative 7, which is x to the 2 take away 7 would be negative 5. Now this one is like 1 times x to the minus 5, which we don't like negative exponents. That would be 1 over x to the positive 5. The next one here, uh, I'm dividing common bases, so I subtract exponents. 
So it would be 2 to the minus 5 minus negative 5. Oh, now hold on. The minus and negative, those two will cancel. So I'm going to have 2 to the minus 5 plus 5 is 0. Oh. And we know that anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. I could have seen that right off the bat, though. If I have the same thing on the top and the bottom, uh, the, the two things will cancel out, and I'll be left with 1. Okay, so there, there's another rule. This one up here, a power of a power. The rule is multiply exponents. So it would be x to the negative 10. Again, if it's x to the negative 10, that's the same as 1 over x to the positive 10. And lastly, a power of a, a product. So this minus 3 has to apply to both things inside the bracket. So it would be x to the minus 6 times y to the positive 6. Here again, I have a negative exponent. I should make it positive. And I can do that by just slipping it to the bottom or the other side of the fraction line. So there's a little bit of review with uh, exponent rules. Maybe try this question. Maybe pause and try it and see what you come up with. But it's sort of lots of stuff involved. Okay. Uh, I would first deal with that negative exponent. So I would change... Um, the top and the bottom, I would flip things over uh, and I keep things identical inside to what they were, but I just change this to a positive 2. And then you could apply that 2 to everything, but you might be able to simplify inside the brackets before you raise it to the 2. For example, 3 goes into 9 uh, 3 times. And then here's some x's. I can use the quotient rule with those. So I have 3. When I'm uh, dividing common bases, I'd subtract exponents. So it would be x to the 2 minus a negative 3. And the y to the minus 2, I'm just going to leave it right there for now. If I do that with the x's, I don't have any denominator anymore. So let me just figure out what that uh, x thing will be. So it will be 2 minus a negative, so those will change to a positive. So it would be x to the 5th y to the minus 2, all squared. Now, I could take care of that negative uh, exponent now, or I could wait till I square everything. Why don't we square everything first, then we'll take care of that. So the 3, again, uh, each of these things are different. So 3 times x to the 5th times y to the minus 2. So each of these terms needs to be raised to that exponent. So it would be 3 to the 2, and then the x, 2 times 5 would be 10, and the y minus 2 times 2 is a minus 4. Almost done. <laughs> 3 squared is 9. x to the 10 is happy where it's at. The negative exponent here, I should change that to the bottom and make it positive. Okay, that's a nice question. All right, scientific notation is a place where we use exponents, and, and we use them uh, as powers of 10 to express very large or very small numbers. Here's a case of a very small number. And if I want to change that to scientific notation, I need to move the decimal, and I have to figure out how many times I'm moving it, but move it so that it comes after the first non-zero number. So it needs to move right to there. So if I change that to scientific notation, it'll be 3.94, and then you go times 10, and then up here as an exponent, you write how many times you had to move it. So I had to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places. So I moved it 7 places. Now to tell whether you should have a positive 7 there or a negative 7, you just look at the number. If it's a very small number, it has to be negative. If it's a very large number, it'll be positive. Sort of like this example here. Here I already have a number written in scientific notation. If they want it in standard notation, I have to move the decimal however many places the power of 10 says. If it's a positive 5, I have to get a big number out of it. And so I'm going to be moving this decimal right there. I'm going to be moving that 5 places to the right. Let me just write it over here. So 2.37. And I'm going to move the decimal 5 places. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it winds up right there. And what I have to put in right here are zeros. Now that doesn't look very good. I'm going to rewrite it. And so it'll be 2, 3, 7, 0, 0, 0. And I could put the decimal at the end there. It's fine to put it in 
or leave it out. But it does not stay where it started. So it's a place where you use um, uh, exponents uh, to help you write very large or very small numbers. Uh, here's an example where we're actually multiplying numbers that have, uh, or multiplying two numbers that are in scientific notation. You can probably just do this on your calculator. Uh, if you know how to use the EE -E button or the EXP button, if you have that on your calculator. Uh, you, so you could just do with this or you can do it this way. What I can do is I can multiply just the number part. Let me do that on my calculator here. So I have 5.3 times 1.1. That gives me 5.83. And then I can multiply the 10 part. Notice that those are common bases. So what can I do with the exponents? Add them, right, because I'm timesing. So it'd be 10 to the 3 plus a negative 4, or 5.83 times 10, 3 take away 4 would be negative 1. So that would be the answer uh, to that question. Okay, the last concept I want to look at quickly is uh, order of operations. You may have heard of bedmas. A lot of people aren't liking the word bedmas anymore because it, it sort of implies, if you write bedmas, it implies that you do division before multiplying and adding before subtracting. But really the rule is you do dividing and multiplying whichever comes first, and then uh, do the others. Okay, same thing with add or subtract. So I've sort of mod modified the bedmas sort of like that. The main concept is brackets come first, then exponents, then either divide or times, whichever comes first, then either add or subtract, whichever comes first. Let's try and apply to those rules to this uh, thing below. Okay, so um, in this question, I'm looking for brackets. So brackets are right here uh, and right there, but there's nothing inside those brackets, so I could just leave that. But this is where I'm going to start. So I'll leave everything else alone, 12 divide. 8 to away, take away 6 is 2. So put a 2 there, plus 9 times 4. Now sometimes you can do more steps at a time, but sometimes that will uh, confuse you or mess you up. So it's best for me to do one thing at a time. All right, now um, I'm going to treat this whole top thing as if it's in brackets, and same thing with the bottom. So I'm going to do the whole top first, then the whole bottom. Okay, here I have a divide, I have an add, and I have a multiply. So I do either divide or multiply, whichever comes first. So I'm going to do this um, divide. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, plus 9 times 4, over... Um, why don't we do these at the same time? Because I have to do that whole thing on the bottom. There are exponents down there, and so I'm going to figure out that exponent. 2 to the 5th, I believe, is 32, plus 3 squared is 9. Okay, there I just, uh, I did, I guess, two or three steps all at once. Hopefully that didn't mess you up. Okay, up top I have an add, and I have a multiply. I have to do the multiply first, so 5 plus 9 times 4 is 36. On the bottom, I just have 32 plus 9 is 41. On the top, 5 plus 36, oh, is 41. And on the bottom, I have 41. So when I divide those two, uh, I come out with 1. Oh, I love those questions where they come out even like that. All right, so that's a good example of order of operations. So in this video, we have looked at exponent laws. We've tried some practice with that. We've seen how exponents are, work with scientific notation. And we've also seen a little bit of exponents and how you prioritize those uh, when you're um, simplifying an expression that it needs to have an order of operations. This is a picture of my daughter feeding a chickadee. Sort of a fun time. You might need that for the video quiz. All right.